Cara. For years, the city has relied on lucrative tax breaks to developers who build in the city, and it's to the point that it's become a standard practice to offer a tax treaty to developments large and small, from the Superman building, the Fane Tower, to even smaller neighborhood projects. Owners of existing properties argue this puts more of a tax burden on their backs. Uh, starting with Mr. Smiley, is that tool overused, the TSAs? And if not, how do you defend giving out these tax breaks to developers when families are seeing their tax bills go up? Yeah, so the tax stabilization tool is, is it's important. The dilemma is it's our only tool. And so uh, as mayor, I'm going to work to make sure that the city's economic development uh, department, the city's economic development plan, and, uh, broadens the toolbox so that there are different uh, incentive programs or subsidy programs to actually subsidize growth. In the early days of the Raimondo administration, when the Commerce Corporation had just been created, we developed a wide array of economic development programs that were tailored to different projects. Job programs, hotel programs, real estate programs, industrial uh, programs. The City of Providence needs a, a, a similarly diverse toolbox. The TSA is important because our commercial taxes are so uh, uncompetitive, but no, it's not a perfect uh, fit for every project and so I hope to use it less often because I hope that there are other ways to make things happen in Providence. Mr. Corvo, is, are the tax treaties overused? Yes, it's reached the point where when developers want to begin to consider a project in Providence, the first thing they do is hire a lobbyist to negotiate the TSA, the Tax Stabilization Agreement. I believe that, as Brett said, it has become by default our only development tool in economic development. We need to transition away from that. We've seen large-scale development happen in, happen in the city uh, recently on Thayer Street, some apartments that were built, multi-million dollar project that was done without a TSA. There's an opportunity for us to streamline our regulatory processes and to make a development more attractive in our city so that we don't have to be leading on the tax stabilization agreement program, which has become a crutch for development. And what it ultimately does is pick winners because we're deciding between new development that's going to have stable, lower taxes and existing development and in existing people who have invested large sums of money in the city who are paying the full rate. That is unfair. Ms. LaFortune, same question. Uh, we have one of the highest commercial tax rates uh, in the nation, and we do need to have a tool to attract developers uh, to invest in the city of Providence. However, uh, we do overutilize it, but also we don't do a really good job managing the TSAs on the back end to ensure that those who are receiving the benefits are meeting um, the requirements that are outlined. That's why I supported um, creating a role for someone to do just that work to better manage the TSAs um, because we have a there are a bunch of TSAs in the city of Providence and everyone has a very different agreement. So we do need to do a better job in managing it. Um, Listen, if we had better schools, we would not have to give out the TSAs. I do think that we would see more um, investors wanting to uh, build in the city of Providence, bring their businesses here, if we had quality schools. But unfortunately, our schools are struggling. We have one of the highest commercial tax rates, and so we have to utilize it as a tool. But as mayor, I want to transition our, transform, excuse me, our educational system so that we're not overly use, utilizing our TSAs and also on the back end have an infrastructure where we're better managing um, the TSAs as well. And a quick follow-up question for each of you. Mm -hmm. uh, the Providence Place Mall's 30-year tax Tax mm -hmm. treaty is set to expire in the coming years. The mall's owners will almost certainly come to the next mayor asking for a new one. Do you support, yes or no, continuing to give a tax break to the mall, or should they have to start paying their full tax bill? Staying with you, Ms. LaFortune. I think the mall should start paying their full tax bill. They've had that TSA for quite some time. Now, if there is an opportunity to uh, transform the mall and make it a mixed-use development maybe we could have community college um, right in that building where people have access to uh, public transportation um, they can take their classes in there uh, and then perhaps a portion of it um, because it is a mission driven um, entity um, or educational entity perhaps we can see how we could work around it but that has been one of the longest TSAs that the city has given out and so at this point um, they should be paying full taxation. Okay, Mr. Smiley? 
Uh, it depends. I, I want to know what the future of the mall is. I want to hear that from the mall owners. Malls are struggling around the country. The Providence Place Mall is no exception. It's struggling. I haven't yet seen a vision for how it thrives into the future. Part of the reason for that TSA was because of the people that it brought to Providence. And it's not bringing those people currently. And so in order to, to substantiate an extension or future tax subsidy, I want to know how is it going to be additive and contributive to Providence's economy. Mr. Corvo, would you extend the tax break to the mall? That would require a significant conversation. The, uh, mo the mall model has been dying in America for decades now, yet the Providence Place Mall continues to have greater than 90% occupancy rate. They've been very agile and evolving. The challenge that we have precisely with tax stabilization agreements is that when that agreement was made, it was designed at a, as a cliff, so that at the end of every tax stabilization agreement period, the, the, these people will go from paying pennies on the dollar to thousands of dollars overnight. That's unsustainable. During the Tavares administration, we worked on creating stepped um, tax stabilization agreements. This model that, that the mall is under is not a sustainable model, and they are going to cry and scream <laughs> because they don't want to go from paying pennies on the dollar to thousands of dollars. There's a conversation to be had about not only the viability of their ability to pay those taxes, but also what is going to become of that building. Well, that, that, that building is has a multitude of future uses. It doesn't have to necessarily be entirely retail. It can be reinvented as a number of things that will generate revenue for the city, generate activity for the owners, and keep the, our downtown thriving. 